Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Since the board exams are approaching, I'm sure you all must have started studying and waiting for some good revision. So this video is going to help you quickly revise important concepts from the chapter force, which is for class 10 ICSE board. So let us start quickly. Yes, first of all, we will talk about what is a translational motion and rotational motion. Yes, so you must have heard or you know read this many a times when there's a rigid body. So rigid body hota kya hai? So if you apply force on that body, it is not going to deform. Means it is not going to change its shape or size. So when you apply a force on a rigid body, yes, this is a rigid body which is free to move. So here if I apply a force on a rigid body in one particular direction, then the object starts moving and it moves in a straight line. So we call that motion as a linear motion or a translational motion. Then what about a body which is pivoted? Pivoted kya hota hai? Pivoted is fixed at one end, right? So if it is fixed at one end, that means it is not free to move. Then what will happen if I apply a force on any side or any direction? So this body will not move because it is not free to move. So it is going to rotate in this case. Yes, and that kind of a motion, we say it is a rotational motion. So as simple as that, a translational motion is when you apply a force in a particular direction, body starts moving in a straight line in the same direction as the force is applied. And when it is pivoted at one end, it is going to get start rotating. That is called as rotational motion. Then a very important concept throughout we're going to learn here is moment of force or torque, simply saying turning effect. Now, what is a turning effect? So we just now see what is a rotational motion, isn't it? So when a body is pivoted at one end, let's say this one. Yes, it is pivoted at one end and then I'm applying a force in any of the direction. Yes, any direction. Now what happens to this body? It starts rotating in either clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction. So if I want to find out what is the turning effect or what is the torque? So turning effect is nothing but how much force I need to apply and uh, you know in what direction I need to apply. So that will be decided on what is going to be the perpendicular distance. Now what is a perpendicular distance? So this is my point O. It is pivoted here. So irregular shape body, a rigid body is pivoted at point O. So I'm calculating how far I'm applying the force. So this is the direction in which I'm applying the force and it is at what distance? Yes, so it is the perpendicular distance at which I'm applying the force. So in that case, how will it start rotating? It starts rotating this way, right? Which is an anti-clockwise direction. So if I want to know what are the factors that affect the turning effect of the body, definitely there are these two ones. How much force I need to apply? And the perpendicular distance, how far I'm applying the force. If I apply a force at pivot, it will not rotate the body for sure. Yes, so I need to apply a force at a distance. So it has to be a perpendicular distance of line of action. So line of action kya hai? This you can see PF is the line of action. So this line of action is how far from point O. This is called as perpendicular distance. So these are the two factors that are going to decide how my turning effect is going to be or how much it is going to be, right? Now, if I want to get the maximum turning effect, I mean, if I want to turn easily, then I have to do two First, hogi, that I need to apply more force. And the second is definitely going to be I have to increase the distance. So either of it, I can increase or both of it, even if I increase, then also, I can achieve the maximum turning effect. Now we will see how do we calculate. Yes, I told you two factors are important, the force and the perpendicular distance. So taking a product of them is going to give me the moment of force. So moment of force mathematically is going to be equal to the product of force 
and the perpendicular distance between that force and the pivoted point. So this is the important formula that we are going to use everywhere. So moment is equal to F into D, which is a force into D is the perpendicular distance. Now, what should be the unit of moment of force? So we all know that force will be the SI unit of force is Newton and the SI unit for distance is meter. So definitely our unit of moment is going to be Newton meter. Now this is which unit? This is the SI unit. Yes, then what about the CGS unit? Can there be a CGS unit also? Yes, definitely. We'll see that now. See, CGS unit for force. Now I will write here force into the distance. For force, the CGS unit is dyne and for the distance, the CGS unit is centimeter. So my CGS unit becomes dyne centimeter. Then there is another type of unit that we have learned, which is a gravitational unit. So gravitational units, again, we will have kilogram force, which is kgf into distances in meter. So force is in kilogram force and the distance in meter. So in the CJ system, it will be gram force and centimeter. So gram force, centimeter. Now the relationship. Relationship between what? The SI unit and the CGS unit. Yes, now one Newton meter equals to now, meter we will again see convert that to, into centimeter. Newton we have to convert into dyne. So, 1 Newton is equal to 10 to the power 5 dyne. And 1 meter is equal to 10 to the power 2 centimeters. Isn't it? So, I get 1 Newton meter is equal to 10 to the power 7 dyne centimeter. And there is a conversion for kilogram force into the Newton meter also. As we all know that 1 kilogram force is equal to 9.8 Newton multiplied by meter, you get 1 kilogram force meter is equal to 9.8 Newton meter. So try and simplify so that you can convert one unit at one time and the other unit at the next time. So it becomes easy. Same ways, 1 gram force centimeter is equal to 980 dyne centimeter. Yes, so this is what uh, we've seen, the types of units of moments of force. So when we now move ahead with the next topic, clockwise and anticlockwise moment. So when I explained what is a moment of force, I mentioned something, you know, when I apply a force, it might move to clockwise or anticlockwise direction, right? So in that simple words, I would explain. So if any object is pivoted at a point like this and I apply a force tangentially, yes, tangentially, मतलब साइड से मैं इसको फोर्स लगा रही हूँ तब वो अगर एंटी क्लॉकवाइज डायरेक्शन में जाता है सो विच इज़ द एंटी क्लॉकवाइज डायरेक्शन दिस वे सो आई एम अप्लाइंग अ फोर्स तू दिस व्हील इफ यू कैन ऑब्जर्व एंड द व्हील इज़ टर्निंग तू द लेफ्ट सो द मोमेंट आई विल कॉल इट एस एंटी क्लॉकवाइज मोमेंट and same ways, if I am applying a force which is turning this wheel into clockwise direction, that will be the clockwise moment. Anticlockwise moment, always remember, is considered to be positive and clockwise moment is always considered to be negative. This is a convention that we all have to follow. So even when we do the calculations or the numericals, that time also we have to remember this. Yes, now... In which all ways can I change the direction? Now we have an uh, object which is pivoted at point. So what will decide that in which direction I can move the particular object or I can rotate the particular object? Now there are two ways of changing the direction of rotation. First direction, first way of it is by changing the point of application of force. Now you'll see here, there's a disc here now, if I'm applying a force downwards, see this one, if I'm applying a force in this direction to this disc, what happens? It is going to move in anticlockwise direction. If I change the point of application of force, that means instead of applying a force downwards, if I apply a force this way to the same disc, it is going to move in clockwise direction. So by changing the point of application of force, I can achieve the change in the direction of rotation. The other way of doing is 
by changing the direction of force yes now here we only change the force direction was same we only change the point of application where we apply the force here we are changing the direction only of the force so if you all observe if i am applying a force in this direction where is it going to move it's going to move anti clockwise and in the same place if i change the direction of force if i reverse the direction of the force it is going to move anti clockwise yes so the position is same position where i'm applying the force is same in this case but what have i changed i have only changed the direction in which i'm applying the force so these are the two points which will decide how to change the direction of rotation by changing the point of application of force or by changing the direction of force yes now we'll move on to the next topic which are a few examples of moment of force now we've studied what is a moment of force how do we get the rotational motion then where have we actually observed all of us have observed this but might not have you know uh, understood that okay why it is so jaise door hota hai right hum hamesha dekhte hai ki door ka handle is towards the end or towards the extreme end now why is the handle not put here at q why the handle not fixed at q remember we have two factors in moment of force or turning effect to get the maximum turning effect we either need to increase the force or increase the perpendicular distance so by not keeping it here at q what i am doing i am increasing the perpendicular distance here yes so i should not apply more force to turn or open the door because i have increased the distance here yes so door handles corner mein kyun hote hai end mein kyun hote hai door ke so that we are increasing the distance so that turning easy ho jaye hamare liye hai na this we all have observed but might not have recognized okay what is the reason for this so it is to get the maximum turning effect or the torque let us move to the next example yes now these uh, hand grinders you all must have seen yes now their handle is also not placed at the center it is at some more distance right little far it is at towards the edge for the same reason we are trying to increase the perpendicular distance so with less amount of force applied we can rotate it comfortably the steering wheel steering wheel also we have never done that you know you uh, hold your wheel steering wheel here and rotate will you be able to do that not possible yes so that is why you are actually applying a force on the wheel here yes and that is what is giving us the rotation either a clockwise or a, or an anti clockwise rotation because we are now increasing the perpendicular distance here yes now we move to the next example you all use bicycles but never really thought of it why are we having that put pedal can we not pedal it the other way can we not move the cycle ahead the other way no here also the same method or the same principle works you got to increase the distance or the perpendicular distance to apply less force and get the cycle moving so the foot pedal if you all observe is kept at little far away from the axle so what we are trying to do here we are trying to increase the perpendicular distance again here so that we don't really have to apply a lot of force to move the bicycle the next example you all must have seen at least the spanners why do they have long handles because you are applying you would never apply a force on a spanner here that will not even rotate anything you will not get the rotational motion if you are applying the force here so where are we applying the force in the spanner towards the end so they have been provided with a longer handle so that you get a greater moment of force same example similar example is a uh, is a screw jack yes so when you are lifting something like a car or something what you do you will rotate this handle so handle is again now you see here is increasing the perpendicular distance here so that we are getting moment of force increase by less amount of force applied there 
So these are the common examples wherein we uh, we do apply the moment of force principle. Thank you all. So if you find this video helpful, like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.